Hello friends. <clears throat> I'm waiting for my little spinning ball to stop spinning. Evidently, there we go. One of the weaknesses of the system is that we can't tell. There we go. Now I can tell. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. Let me Sorry about that. I left you guys hanging for a long time saying to you that I'm about to broadcast and then not doing it. So who knows how many people were here and gave up. Uh, sorry about that. All right. I am here. This is Daily Art Adventure number 777. It's kind of a cool number. 777. Oil on aluminum. An experiment. Let me turn you now to the main subject at hand, which is this little... Aluminum. Well, I'll, I'll leave it away for a little bit. There you go. So this is the the gouache sketch that I did some months ago. Uh, next week, I plan to lead a class in this, doing this painting on aluminum. And before I do that, I figured I should probably try it one time before I teach a class on it. <laughs> I've done, um, I think, at least two paintings on aluminum, but it might be three. Uh, I can't remember. I know I've done two uh, Santa Claus um, portraits on aluminum a couple Christmases ago. One, anyway. All right, so here we go. I have, I'm using Neo McGilp. I tested uh, my normal Liquin and Neo McGilp, and it seemed to me that the Neo McGilp just went on the on the aluminum just in a little bit more friendly manner all right so a couple, little bit more information about this this painting first of all um, the class I've never done a class like this ever and I don't know if anybody has signed up for it it's supposed to take place, place next this coming Thursday if anybody wants watching wants to come you get on jerry'sautorama.com and look for their um, Look for their little, oh, that's right, that's right, I, I did do, that's right, I did a nice little study on aluminum. So I've done at least three paintings on aluminum, and it may be four. All right, so um, thank you for reminding me of that, Susan. So this is uh, what I would call unapologetic Bob Ross style painting. That's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to teach the class is, Stroke by whoops, and uh, hang on, I'm, I'm almost forgot here. I, I'm going to be taking today, I'm going to be taking pictures at each stage of the uh, painting process. So, the first thing I did was Naples yellow with uh, a fairly generous. Um, swab of Neil McGilp. I'm going to take a picture at each stage of the painting process so that I can show it to my students. So I started out with Naples yellow and then I added a little bit of um, my words are coming slowly add a little bit of uh, Scarlet Lake. Yes, I do know the name of that color, I promise. Okay, now I'm adding even a little bit more. I probably didn't need to take that last picture. I should have saved it. Should have saved it till this time. My camera is having a hard time focusing on this smooth surface. All right, what next? Uh, I'm thinking, thinking. I'm making this up as I go, thus, thus the, the experiment as part of this title. Um, I 
I'm still thinking, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to do a very light, that means a lot of white and a little bit of, a um, little bit of phthalo blue. So I want a very pale, opaque blue. Oh, and just an, another quick comment about uh, painting on aluminum. Uh, there are some people who say they paint on aluminum, but what they really mean is they're just painting on a flat surface underneath of which is aluminum. And I guess that's okay. <laughs> I mean, certainly it's legal. They can do it if they want to. But all they're, all, the only thing that all they're using the aluminum for is a flat surface because they'll gesso the aluminum, which, okay, as I said, that's legal, but it seems silly to me. <laughs> Sorry to be so blunt. Um, um, what's the point? What's the point in uh, using aluminum? I mean, it's a flat surface. I get that. Anyway, I was, the first time I, I ever really saw anybody was introduced to the concept of painting on aluminum was about 10 years ago when I was painting in France with David Dunlop. That sounds impressive, doesn't it? I just made myself sound really cool. It's a long story. I'm not nearly as cool as it sounds, but it was great fun. There were about four of us over there at the invitation of Jerry's Artorama. Okay, so I just mixed up. You know, this is, I got to, sorry, this is just driving me bazooic painting with one hand, so I, I just can't handle it. Sorry. What a wimp I am. Uh, okay, next thing is some atmospheric blue. So same, same color, maybe a little bit darker blue, but. Okay, so I like painting right on the aluminum because then some of the aluminum shows through. Now, <laughs> oh, so I learned that from David Dunlop. He's the first one. He also paints on copper, I think. Uh, and the, the beauty of painting out in aluminum is the aluminosity. That's, that's, I'm being funny, I just made up a word. Is the aluminosity <laughs> that one gets by the little bits of the metallic shininess showing through. Okay, bear with me once again. I need to take a picture of this. This will be step two. All right. And what's step three? Hmm. Okay, I think it's going to be mixing some of that orange and blue together, adding a little bit of, so I need to take notes and all this stuff, not right now, but a little bit of raw umber. So I've got a, a neutral mid-tone brownish stuff. And now I'm going to do the first impression of distant trees. So here's where you're seeing some, here's where you're seeing some real Bob Ross stuff showing up. In fact, that didn't work very well. So let's go to the, the Bob Ross knife, shall we? A uh, uh, knife, the Bob Ross uh, brush, <laughs> AKA fan brush. And as you, if you're a regular, you've heard me many times, but any newcomers here, um, every, every real artist, and I like Bob Ross, I loved his program. Uh, but was he a good painter? Nobody knows. <laughs> Did he do good paintings on his TV show? The answer is heck no. No, 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 no. Do not make, no. And nobody watching me makes that mistake. But of course, you know, out there in the world, a lot of people, that's the, he's the best artist they, they know. Um, and oh, I said all this yesterday, so forgive me, I'm repeating myself. All right, I'm going to take a picture of that. Let me see. I think I might want to do, yeah, just use some of that same color to begin the, the valley uh, of the, the creek, stream, river, whatever you want to call it there. And there's going to be a lot of interruptions to this uh, broadcast today because once again, I'm stopping to take pictures of, okay, 
of the painting step by step by step. And I'll probably show the students next week. I'll be showing them um, the, the, the steps step by step. All right, so what's next? Layer one, layer, oh, I already forgot something. I missed a layer, I missed a step. Let's see if I can retrofit this. I think I can. So, okay, I was, I was on Bob Ross again. What's, what's wrong with Bob Ross painting? I mean, it was a great TV show. And, and, and again, if you're a painter, if you're not a painter, absolutely. If you, if you don't know his brush tricks, then you're not a very good painter. You, you need to know his tricks, okay? How did he do a good, quote unquote, a beautiful painting in 20 minutes? The answer is brush tricks. Repetitive strokes, that's the short answer to that question. Repetitive, similar strokes. Um, and you, as an artist, should know them too, but you just don't use them. Why? Oh man, forgive me, I'm, I said all of this yesterday, and here I am saying it again already. Uh, why don't you do Bob Ross stuff, uh, brush strokes? Because the essence of good painting is the art, is making interesting marks. The essence of good painting is making interesting marks. The essence of good drawing is making interesting marks. And the essence of Bob Ross painting is repetitive marks. So you see, the, S, the, the antithesis of interesting is repetitive. And that's precisely what Bob Ross did. Not saying nothing bad about him or his TV show. His TV show was awesome, but it wasn't good painting, right? All right, so sorry, that sounds like I'm beating that horse to death. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Till tomorrow. <laughs> and I hope I don't say anything about it tomorrow. Um, all right, I think I'm going to go ahead. Let me see, do I take a picture now? Yeah, I think I will because I don't want to confuse my students. So hang on. I don't, I don't see any other chats. I hope I'm not missing any. I just said Susan said hi a couple times. I appreciate that. The rest of you, just give me a quick howdy. If you're watching, I'd love to hear from you. Come, join, jump in, be a part of the conversation, be a part of the community. There are not very many of us watching, as you probably know. Um, but it's a delightful little community that we have here. Okay, I'm going to begin doing some real rudimentary drawings of the image. Now, you and I know that next week, if I have beginner students in my class, well, they'll, they'll <laughs> I hope they're not watching right now, they, they will mess up at every single <laughs> step. That sounds really rude. Sorry about that. If any of you are watching, I love you. Um, um, but 99% of the problems that early journey painters have, 90% 9% of the problems they have are drawing problems, okay? So this, like, getting that curve right. Hello, Jane. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is, I'm not at all painting in my normal. This is, this is Bob Ross paint, Bob Ross on aluminum. That, maybe I should have called it that. That would have gotten maybe some interest, wouldn't it? But my draw, my my students are going to have a hard time. I'm, maybe I should provide them with a template, a piece of cardboard that they could trace or something, because they'll they'll sweat for hours over that shape and still won't get it right. And you and I both know that I'm telling you the truth. Um, uh, let me think. Let me think. Yeah, I think I'll stop there for a moment. Well, hello, Duncan. Thanks for being brave, <laughs> jumping in and saying hi. Appreciate that. Hello to you. Everybody say hi to Duncan. <laughs> and, and Duncan, on this channel, <laughs> people really will say hi <laughs> or, or I've missed my guess. All right, I'm going to take a picture again. You know, I wonder if, I don't know if this broadcast would be more interested if you could see more of what I'm doing or not. You see less of the painting, but more of the action, maybe. All right, so took a picture. Again, for those of you who just joined us, here's my, my go-by, my uh, reference. That is a little gouache painting that I, that I did uh, straight on my head, 
and you know what I you know what I say about painting out of your head, right? I, normally, I'm saying don't do it, but if it's a Bob Ross painting, <laughs> go what the heck? Go ahead, paint right out of your head. Just just do it. All right. Now it comes a first a little bit of interest. Let's do some some sky. One of the other uh, requirements, if you will, of this particular painting, if I'm going to do it with a bunch of students in three hours, we have to do it really quickly, right? We, we have not got all day, as they say. So, yeah, let's do this. So it's gotta be quick. If I was really good, <laughs> I would uh, do this twice before my class on next week, but <laughs> I make no, no pretense of being that good, that, that nice, that kind. But I do need to stop right there and uh, take another picture. appropriately have Christmas music playing in the background. After I did this little sketch up here, I had a second thought and it was um, <laughs> and it was that um, <laughs> thank you Jane for saying hi. Thank you for Duncan for hi and saying hi back. Uh, back Oh, the thought was um, that I changed this to a, a man in red. So, and I, I think I'll give my students that option. They can turn him into a very subtle Santa figure if they want to. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But if they want to, they can, as I said, turn him into a subtle Santa. So, okay, now I'm doing raw umber. See, I even want to make note of the colors I'm using. Raw umber and a little bit of blue to to render uh, these trees. Here's another moment at which my students, students will have a hard time. I'm having, <laughs> forget students, I'm having a hard time rendering that tree. Well, somebody's knocked on a door downstairs. I hope it's not, I hope they're not really knocking on a door. Maybe not, maybe it's somebody in the kitchen. I, when I came up a few minutes ago, I was the only one in the house. That's why I'm paying attention at all to what's going on downstairs. Now I know that at every, every, at every turn, at every juncture in this painting, I will be struggling between the impulse to do a good painting, quote unquote, good painting, that has to do with the, the nature of my marks, and a, and a fast, hurry up Bob Ross painting, but that's just, that's just the way it's gonna go. All right, now with this darker color, let's do some other dark stuff. Including there's a lantern at each end of the bridge. Oh, by the way, a few minutes ago I said I, I did this uh, this scene completely out of my head. Well, that, that's not exactly true um, because I did uh, I did some research. So I I looked up. I don't remember stone bridges, I think, or maybe even stone bridge in winter. I can't, I can't remember for sure. But um, so I didn't, I didn't just draw out of my head completely. I, I did research first, and then drew out of my head. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. I'm doing a lot of rolling my brushes, as you can see. Twirling, twisting, that's pretty standard for me. Oh, hey, sweetie. Okay. 
Let's do some of the dark streaks down here in the water. All right, I need to stop there and take another picture. Hello, Marco. Good to hear from you again. Okay, time up to take a picture. Because uh, if you joined me late, you might have missed. I'm hoping to teach this next uh, Thursday evening. That is, of course, dependent upon whether anybody actually sign signs up. for my class. All right, where to go from here? Oh, you know what? I, for, I should have done the, the figure. So, so hang on, we do the, do the figure now. And here's another point at which my students will just have you know, a hard, hard time. Um, unless they're just good at drawing human beings, which, you know, most people are not. It takes some studied effort to be good at drawing human beings. So forgive me. I, I should have done that last time, so I'm taking another picture now. Oh man, I hit some button on my camera and can't get it to behave. There we go. All right. All right, now, where to go next? Um, oh, I know. The, the pale blue, the pale blue stuff. There's already one layer of pale blue, but now there, it's going to be a little bit more intense. And it's okay if my brushes are slightly dirty. And this is... Um, the, the mist, so to speak, the fog, the atmosphere hovering there, even in front of uh, the trees that we did earlier. Now, for instance, at this point, say I already painted the little figure. According to Bob Ross style painting, I should have done this mist before I did any of this up close drawing, right? Because that's how you paint in, in traditional opaque oil painting Bob Ross land, in the land of Bob Ross painting. You paint from far to close, virtually without exception. Uh, so I don't know if I'll do this next week or not. I, I'll have to rethink that because I'm sort of by accident here, I'm painting in a, a much more proper way, which is, I don't usually say it this way, but I'll go ahead and say it. I'm painting front to back like a watercolorist, instead of traditional oil opaque back to front. And I've talked about why that is the case. Um, not because it's logical or uh, lends itself to realism, quite the opposite, for the opposite reason, because it actually it, um, surprises the viewer and thereby creates a little millisecond of surprise in the mind of the person who views the painting. I think I'll have to do some blue down here too. So at the moment by doing, well, by, by doing blue around. So I, but I'm, I'm going to rethink that. I'm not sure, you know, can I throw my beginner students next week? Can I throw them that much of a curve? I'm not sure that I can. Might be more than they can handle, so to speak. So I will rethink that. 
And if, if I'm really good, I will paint this whole thing twice. I'm not sure that I'm that good. By good, I mean if I'm that kind. If I'm kind enough to do that, that's what I'll do. Not sure I'm that kind. We'll see. Whew. And my, you heard my wife came in just a few minutes ago and said, I need to talk to you. So we'll see. I, I may not get to continue this broadcast straight on through. All right, now the trees. These, by that I mean these evergreens. All right, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I think I'll I think I'll tackle it traditional method. That is to say, green greenery, green boughs first, um, and uh, snow second. Even though, if I were doing a quote unquote real painting, I would do exactly the, I would do snow first and green second. Okay, so here's boy. Here's another. I'm, I'm, as I do this, I'm realizing. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Beginners are going to have a real hard time with this. Okay. Uh, oh, whoops. Sorry. Ah, Uncle joined us, eh? And uh, hello, Marco. Good to have you here. Good to have you here, Uncle. All right. I was going to say not for that right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That is a Bob Ross tree, and I'm going to do uh, at least three more of them. And see how easy it is. Just see, and, and so, yes, it's easy, but it, this is not good painting. Do you, does that make sense to you? That's like the, if you will, that's the antithesis of good painting. Um, because it's, for some reason, whenever I say this, I always hear it in Portuguese. There's this long story behind that. I won't go into it. In English, it's repeat, repeat, repeat. And for some reason, I always hear it in the Portuguese. I'm not an expert at Portuguese, but I know a little. Hepech, hepech, hepech. <laughs> repeat. Hepech, hepech, hepech. An initial R in Portuguese is pronounced like the letter H in English. So instead of repech, it's hepech, he, hepech, hepech, hepech. Now, here's what I'll do. Well, I've got a little bit of that green. Let's put some green down in here. And a little bit down here just for fun. Not much, just a little bit. All right, time to take another picture. For being in a hurry, I sure am going slowly, you guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, hmm. I am not crazy about. There's a lot that I'm not crazy about. Um, oh, I can't have beginner students doing sky holes, really, can I? It will really be a disaster, won't it? Darn. I'm sitting here with my arms folded. Want proof? There. <laughs> sitting here with my arms folded, trying to figure out how to get myself out of this mess, bit of a mess that I'm in. You know what? I'm wondering what would happen. What would happen if we took a, a brush? Nice shot of my wall there. What if we do something like this? Could I get the people to do? Oh, you know what? I could. Okay, forget that. We're going to do this earlier in the process. 
We're going to create the illusion, the illusion of branches. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Of distant branches by scratching. Hello, Uncle. No, no, no. Yeah, you missed the beginning. I do not prime first. In fact, I was sort of ridiculing in a nice, friendly way, of course. <laughs> the notion of painting on aluminum and, and gessoing the aluminum. Many people do that. There's no doubt some outrageously gifted and rich and famous artists who beat me in competitions um, who do that. But I think it's dumb. What's the point of painting on aluminum? Other, I mean, other than the obvious, it gives you a flat, smooth surface. But, you know, so does a properly gessoed piece of plywood. Um, I mean, just, you know, okay. So maybe the aluminum will last 1,500 years instead of just 1,000. Um, okay, so that was kind of fun. But I'll, I'll do that earlier in the process. That actually worked pretty well for students, you know. Um, to me, the, the beauty of aluminum is, is the, the iridescence, the illuminescence, I call al aluminum essence, aluminum essence, um, that you can see the metal coming through. Let me pick you guys up for just a minute and see. I don't know if, if let me see if I can see as I look, whoops. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Do you see the little bits, the little shiny bits? I don't mean just reflection, but the bits where the, where the metal, of course, especially where I just scratched it, that increased that effect quite a bit. Uh, but that makes me feel somewhat better. <laughs> Not much, mind you, just a little bit. And once again, I am, this is all an experiment, and I'm trying to figure out how am I going to do this with a bunch of students who don't really know how to paint. That's, that's who this class is advertised for. Well, here's one thought. <clears throat> oh, I didn't realize this was an angle brush, but that'll just have to do. I'm going to mix up some titanium white and a little bit of Naples yellow. Again, my, Naples yellow is like a very, very pale version of, looks like, yellow ochre. And it's my go-to color for warming white. If I, don't, I don't want yellow, I just want a warm white. So that's what I'm doing right here. All right, how about this? Now this is gonna be some serious tongue painting here. And you know what? I'm gonna give you guys a crazy ride, so hang on just for a second. Jerk and bump, earthquake. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Knocked my camera on the floor. My other camera, that is. All right, sorry about that craziness. I, I'm gonna be using my, we're gonna do some tongue painting, which means I'm gonna be painting with my right hand. That's why these brushes are cheap right there. Crap. <laughs> I could use a mall stick right about now. Okay, even, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a mistake. Okay, hang on, I'm not gonna erase it. Um, I'm gonna change, I, I, I just looked at my reference more carefully and said, oh wait, wait, wait. Before I do the warm white, I'm supposed to do um, the blue side of the tree. Okay, so sorry about that. That is... Um, again, you know, uncles and, and others who have joined us lately, I hope to teach this and I'm advertising it. It's the first time I've ever done a class like this. It's a, it's a paint-along class, sort of follow me stroke by stroke kind of class. In other words, it's like a Bob Ross painting. Does that make sense? But even as I do this here with you today, <laughs> at several points I'm going, ooh, you know what? Early journey painters, that is to say wannabe student beginner painters, are gonna have a real hard time. <laughs> I'm thinking even this, this blue right here uh, and the white to follow. Um, they're going to have a hard time with. Somehow when I do it, it looks kind of like 
snow on branches. When they do it, it will look like too much like um, blue lines on top of a tree. But I don't know. Can't be helped, I don't think. So anyway, I'll proceed. All right. Oh, wait. Is there anything else I need to paint? No, that'll do. Okay, forgive me. Again, take another picture. Just so you think, just so you don't think I'm lying. <laughs> just so you can see, see what I'm doing. Take a picture. Plug my almost dead camera back in. And uh, back to, I'm, I'm using this small camera as my YouTube monitor today because my iPad up in had a dead battery. So, all right, now back to the back to the warm white then, which is a lot of titanium white with just a little bit of Naples yellow. And we can make this pretty. We can make a pretty big pile of this. It'd be nice if we could get some. Impasto, impasto, but I don't know that we can. Can I get you guys any closer? Ooh, any closer to the painting? Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, I, I think it's the, the reason I'm doing so bad. It, two, twofold. Yeah, it's a small painting, but I'm, I'm not trying to paint like myself. That we're, we're trying to do a. A Hallmark business, a Hallmark Christmas card, a cutesy party picture, a Bob Ross imitation, all those, all those descriptions. So I'm not trying to do good painting. I'm trying to do a cute painting, so it'll be good in that sense. But of course, as you know, I'm trying to do a first half of journey painting and real quickly. So that's. Yeah, you know, that, that's a good point that um, a few people might see the title of this painting on aluminum and like, oh good, I always wanted to see, uh, you know, it would be like to paint on aluminum and then they show up and it's like, oh, I'm not, it's, he's not doing real painting on aluminum, he's doing cheesy, chintzy, cutesy, there's the word, he's doing cutesy painting on aluminum. That's not very good. Maybe I should change the edit the title later. Cutesy, <laughs> cutesy uh, painting on aluminum. Actually, somebody just asked, "Does uh, will acrylics, uncles?" No. Um, well, that is to say, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm not claiming to be an expert. Here's my opinion, uncle, on on the uh, aluminum on acrylic. I would not try it. Now, here, here's my main source of information. As you know, my palette is glass, right? All right. And every once in a while, for various and sundry reasons, I end up uh, mixing acrylic paint on glass. And um, after it dries, acrylic paint is not very difficult to get off glass. In other words, acrylic paint comes off glass quite easily. Does that make sense? So that makes me think that no, if it comes off glass easily, it'll probably come off aluminum easily. So that's what I think. Uh, whereas on the other hand, um, just in case anybody out there hasn't tried it, um, if you let your oil dry completely on your glass palette, uh, as I have one downstairs at the moment, by the way, that is in this condition. If you try to get, when you go to get oil paint off glass, dry oil paint, it is a bother. It is a real, real pain. Um, which leads me to think that oil paint sticks to stuff a lot better than acrylic paint does, including oil paint sticks to acrylics 
fairly well. There's always there's always some debate among my watchers, viewers, followers, whatever, about you know the advisability of painting uh, acrylic oil on top of acrylics. And I, have, I have a whole lecture on that subject that I don't want to repeat right now, but a big part of that that answer is. Um, Okay, y'all. Um, David suggested me use a smaller brush. My wife just gave me a call and said, "Can I talk to you?" So hang on, just folks. I need to. I need to take a quick break. Don't talk to my wife. Wife gets priority. I'll be back in five minutes. I expect. Thanks. Be back in just a minute. Bye bye. getting static. All right, so it turns out I just have 25 more minutes <laughs> before it's time for me to go. Um, by the way, I mentioned when I just started this uh, broadcast, I'm going to try with a, with a larger round brush and see if I like that any better. I used a fan brush just a little bit ago. Uncle, was that before you, before you came on? No, you were here, weren't you? Maybe not. Anyway, yep, I'll be using that again, I'm sure. So I only have about 20 more minutes. And then my wife and I need to dash off, so I won't even finish this as much as I had hoped. <laughs> Life has its trials, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> would that all my trials were about that big. <laughs> Hmm. Well, that's kind of cute, don't you think? <laughs> um, I'm going to add a little bit more glow to this light. Oh, and then I'm going to use my finger. I saw some comment there, David, about big brush. I am thinking, forgive me, I'm, this is spontaneous here, gang. Um, I'm getting a piece, a, a pair of scissors. Um, hang on, see, let, let you watch me run around my studio. I'm looking for a piece of stiff paper. ruin a whole big piece of Bristol board, but let me. I'm thinking about making um, cheap um, palette knife, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is cut up a number of little squares of stiff paper, Bristol board, that's enough. I'm experimenting here, I have not, I have not tried this, this exact way ever, but I'm thinking about the, the white branches on the trees up here are really important. So I'm thinking about just randomly bending this into an S curve 
and give the students a whole stack of these and, and have them create a number of different S-curves and then dip that in paint and then come up here and uh, Oops, that didn't work so well. Let me let me put that one down and try one that's just straight, just a straight piece of. Maybe I maybe I should give them. Whoops, that didn't work so well. It's a little bit too straight. But maybe if I just keep going. That sounded like Bob Ross for a second there. Just keep going. <laughs> I don't know if he said that phrase, but the inflection. Sound a little Rossish. Ooh, now that, there we go. Oh, we're discovering something. Just use the middle of the curve to get slightly curved, so you're not putting down perfectly straight lines. And I've got one more. I'm just making this up right here on the spot. I didn't even think about this till just a second ago. So the, the one the one curve, the single curve, is seems to be working the best, better than the S curve and better than the straight. But I suppose I could give the students the option of now I don't remember ever seeing Bob Ross do that, but he should have. Now <laughs> and now I'm wondering and uh, now I'm wondering about very gently scratching through that brush handle yeah yeah okay then finally pick up I need a mall hang on I don't have a mall stick but I have a long brush and then just pick a few of these larger bows and and uh, put a heavier layer of snow on just a few of them. What do you think? Hmm. Not sure. Not crazy about some of those marks. Still, not bad. Yeah, not bad. I have to do the whole thing twice, right? Because I've got the other tree to go. <clears throat> now I have a hunch that the st students would re <laughs> will really get a kick out of this part. This is this is very Rob Rossi. Now this tree's further away, so not not as much of that stuff. Not quite as busy. This would be a great time for a fan brush. I might try that too. So I'm not going to have time to finish this because, as I said, it turns out my wife and I are going to have an evening engagement tonight and we have to leave. It turns out a lot earlier than we thought. So it's been fun while it lasted, folks. Okay, when I sit back and squint and look at this, it's like, eh, okay, you know. <laughs> Not too bad. I'm hoping my students feel the same way. Oh, I need to take a picture of that. Hang on just a second. Okay. Okay. We just got a 10 minute stay of execution about my how long can I paint now let's do some of the the uh, the stonework on the bridge and again I, th I think this I can describe to students the stones along the bottom are all uh, arranged in I don't know what it's called catenary arch I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing I know the word I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right there's a distinctive 
curve and so on. Keystone, maybe, I don't know. And then there's a, a lip under the top course of stones that creates a shadow. So this, then in between there, we don't have to do too much, but just generally a little semi-irregular circles of darkness. <laughs> um, I'm using, for those of you who joined us late, um, I'm using um, Neil McGilp as a as a medium here. Now the color of the stones in between these marks was the part of the very first uh, layer that I put down over much of the canvas. And it was basically uh, Naples yellow and white, just a pale, pale beige tan color. All right, so that looks a little bit like stonework. And I think I can persuade my students to do this. That is, I'm trying to get a couple of smaller brushes clean, clean enough so that I can use them. So I'm going to mix up that same color. Uh, oh, and I need to add a little raw umber to it. So I'm trying to, a bet, essentially trying to match this color right here, but in an, in an opaque version instead of uh, translucent. And then in these dark areas, I'll zoom in as close as I can. Where it seems appropriate. Now we're painting with the dark lines. I was painting between the stones. Does that make sense? But now with the light paint, I'm painting positive. I'm painting the stones in between. And this would all be a little bit easier. I'm actually wondering about having my students again, because the goal of this class is this is not a not a how to paint class unless I were to modify that by saying how to do a painting, how to do a first half of art journey painting, how to paint a pretty picture. I could call it that. Do you think they'd take well to that sarcastic tone? How to paint a pretty picture? No, they would. That's what most most early painters that's exactly what they want to do now I'm gonna mix a little more light into this color I'm using so southern some of my stones will be lighter in tone lighter in color than the ones I just put down so there's a variety okay whoops look at that jerky hand normally all those jerks like that all that that hand jerking like that normally that's what I say that's good painting but when you're trying to do a purdy picture that all the rules are different we that's not what we don't we want our we want to control freak grip and so on you all know that it's, it's, I'm doing all the stuff that I normally rant and rave against preach against I'm doing it now all right quick good enough quick little uh, stone bridge and I think that's close enough let me take a quick shot picture that quickly yes to tell you the truth this is driving me crazy <laughs> it's, it's just it's not good enough it's not good enough to be a pretty picture but I won't tell my students that they would be thrilled I, I expect that they, they would any of them would be thrilled if they can produce I'm not bragging here. I'm just saying this is the way beginner painters are. If they can paint paint a pretty picture, they they, they are thrilled. I'm using um, this the the light color that I just used on those rocks uh, to do some of the snow here, some of the light on the snow. By the way, this I will say in my my 
gouache painting up here is a pretty good example. One of the questions I often ask my students, anybody who's listening, how do you paint white things, things that are white, how do you paint them? And, and the sort of smart aleck answer is, is anything but white. Um, do not do not reach for your titanium white or your zinc. No, neither one. Don't don't make a beeline for your tube of white paint. What color do you paint white stuff? Sort of the smart aleck answer is uh, any color but white. And then you, at okay, so obviously it's a little. There's something going on. There's a bit of a tongue in cheek there somewhere, and indeed there is. And then at the very end of the process, then you reach for the white. But this, the, the universal student uh, ten tendency for painting white things is reach for the white paint. And the answer is you don't paint with white until the very, very end of the process. And this little painting is a good example of that because uh, the, the, the whole thing is... Uh, peachy color, beige tan, peach, pale orange, whatever you want to call it, and some pale blue, and then just the, the highlights are white. The closest thing I have to white is, well, I guess this, the tree branches the, and the evergreen. You know what, I wonder what would happen, I'm experimenting again, I wonder what would happen if I had my students scratch their pine branches like that. Yeah. Okay, so now I've changing my rules, right? Going back, I'll never be able to remember all this. <sighs> well, hot dog, I'm almost finished. Oh, I know. Let's do, I just had another inspiration. Pick up these same pieces of uh, cardboard. And make uh, the reflection in the water. Ooh, now that was a good idea. And that right there, ladies, I don't know if Bob Ross ever did this, but that is a Bob Ross kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? That's a Bob Ross kind of thing to do. I don't think he used pieces of cardboard. It's a little too weird. You can do the same thing with a palette knife, of course. Bob Ross's other favorite tool, besides fan brush, right, is the palette knife. And I would say uh, I overdid it <laughs> in the in the water reflection. <laughs> so now I'm repenting of that by scratching a little bit, making a little bit more irregular. Ooh, that actually worked very well. Wow. Now how about that? So there's a Bob Ross trick that I just taught myself right there in your presence. Um. I think down here in the foreground, I really should have my students try a little bit of sky holes, although it's not sky, it's snow holes. But in this grass down here, if they can do a little bit of peeking through whatever this, these bushes down here, that would be nice. I'm going to take a picture of that stage. I wonder if I'll be able to remember. Um, I have the, the man to go yet. And then, and then we're going to try, this is dangerous. This is very dangerous. I'm not crazy about the base of that tree, but I'm in a hurry. Um, I'm thinking first, before I do the man, though, I'm going to um, make uh, do some almost pure white, the, the whitest white I've used up until this point. I didn't clean my brushes. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have. But let's just come in here and do just a few white highlights
Oh, I know what we'll do. I was saying I, what I would really like to do is spatter or splatter some uh, snowflakes. Uh, but spattering is quite an art. And I, th I think it would be probably be disaster for about 75% of the students. So we won't do that. That would just, that would just, just asking for trouble. So I think what we'll do instead, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to do the, the Santa figure, mixing up a uh, dark, a naphthol crimson-ish red for my first, and, and I'm going to have to work out very carefully the anatomy. I may even give them a, a template for this as well. Okay, there's his forearm. There's his trunk. Here's his backpack. And one leg goes forward like this. Other leg goes back. Let's give him a little... No, oh, and then I guess a little touch of red on the top. Okay, now I think, I think that my students will be capable of this much um, detail, and that is I'm wiping off my brush, and then let's pick up a uh, Scarlet Lake, a little bit of white. So Scarlet Lake, you understand, is a very warm orange-ish red, whereas Naphthal Crimson is a very cool and dark red. So what I'm doing here is... Uh, good painting that is doing dark, light light red on top of dark red. It gives us a chance to do is the arm that's close to us. And let me think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out very carefully. Maybe I should have given him a, nah, a green backpack. And then I decided, nah, that'd be too much. All right. I will, I will diagram all that really carefully for the students for next week. Maybe even give them a template. I'll normally pronounce template. Um, man, can we do flesh tone? I hope so. Just a little tiny dab. I'm going to bring you guys in really close. This is some really small painting, I know. Now you're at more of an angle, but I don't know. Maybe you can see it. Okay, just a dab for a face. One hand. And another hand. And then one more uh, piece of stiff paper. Get it the right length, yeah? And rub it through anything dark that's on your canvas. Does I mean, on your palette, doesn't matter what. And should the stick go back or forward? Stick goes back. There. Now tell me that ain't cute. Shut up. Don't tell me that ain't cute. <laughs> it's an expression. That means it is cute. I don't care what you say. Right now, if I want to get really brave, could I do some white dot of white beard, white on the sleeve, white on top of the pack? I don't know. Probably shouldn't try anything on the hat, but I did anyway. And the sleeve. There we go. Here, I'm going to pick you guys up for a second so you can see that. Forgive my hand in your way there. There. Now, don't tell me that ain't cute, because that is cute. <laughs> All right, and with the same brush, that is a tiny brush, I would, I would rather spatter. And uh, when I did, let me show you quickly, when I did this painting up here, I spattered. You can see that, right? Uh, by the way, if, you have, if you've never heard my spatter lesson, I do have one, and it's real simple. Um, if you want, in a real painting, if you want to do any spattering, it's real simple, and it's real easy and not dangerous. 
But in a real painting, that is to say, not a purdy picture painting, not a, like this, but a real painting, you wait, especially in oil, you wait until the whole painting is dry. So a day, two, three days, whatever it takes for your oil painting to dry, a week. And then you, then you take it out in the front yard or somewhere and you practice spattering and you do it again, you do it, you wipe it off. The likelihood that you get it right the first time is minimal. You do it over and over and over again, wiping it off completely each time till you get the perfect spatter and then you're done. You don't spatter it a whole bunch of times. All right, but that we obviously don't have that luxury in a class. So what I'm going to tell my students is they're going to have a hard time making dots this small. And what is there any trick for making dots? How about with the, oh, that's even worse. Those are terrible. I'm sure I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I did that one. Now, here. You see, the fact is, a cheap brush like that does not have a point. Honestly, a cheap brush like that simply does not have a point. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Right at the moment, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a good brush, which is a Winsor Newton Series 7. Hey, here's a little bit of brushmanship some of you might have never seen before so let me show you how you train a brush that is just sticking it in the paint then on a piece of clear glass I'm twisting it and spinning it twisting it and dragging it okay that's that's called training the <laughs> training the brush getting the fibers to point the right way and in the right direction and so on and so on and so forth does that make sense so there so now I have a trained brush a good quality brush so now I can make really tiny dots. In fact, I'm going to pick up paint from some of these larger. Okay, and I'm going to give you a, at least one quick lesson in making dots. If, God forbid, you, you have to do dots by hand uh, instead of randomly the random the random spatter always looks more believable um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you if you have to do it by hand let me give you a lesson you're already noticing I am not going to put spatters across a whole painting that would be disaster now you basically pick one path one curve it's usually a good idea not a straight line and all of your spattering happens in that curve. Now, I don't know. That makes me. I, I know Bob Timberlake, a famous North Carolina country painter, sort of. Um, he does a lot of paintings with snow, with snow falling. I think, and and I, I don't know if he does this or not. Whoops! <laughs> that was a complete mistake. <laughs> Somebody's throwing off camera, is throwing a snowball. We caught it mid flight. <laughs> Here's another tip um, make some of your dots uh, an intentional constellation that is groupings and often. I'm doing it now, actually in a trail, like the biggest one, then smaller. That's just because it's hard to do, if, as a human being, it's hard to do random, chaotic, natural looking uh, spread. Left to our own devices, we will always do something that looks contrived. So I've just given you two tips to avoid, and I'm going to stop right there, to, for avoiding the contrived look. One is, Make all of your dots in one large zone. And secondly, uh, place them in groupings, especially in, in rows. A little bit, not on every one, of course. Just uh, take, pick several and create rows out of them. Create a row of dots behind them. All right, time for me to go. I got farther than I thought I would. So I'm going to pick you up one more time and just let you see this silly little painting. Um, if I can get my students to do anything like that, I, I think they'll be quite tickled. Um, 
if I have time, see there's several things about this that I like better than this. I like the color in this considerably more than the color in this. So I might make that adjustment and try it again. One thing I could actually do, couldn't I, is uh, completely wipe this off right now and uh, do it all again. I don't know. I don't know that I can bring myself to do that. Um, and unfortunately, whatever I do, I have to do in the next two minutes because we're about to leave. So, so here's the picture of the final product. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's been crazy fun, y'all. Thanks for joining me. That's all. Love you. Bye.